Hi everybody, I'm Bob McInerney and I'm a professor of psychology at Point Park University. And this is a personal story about the creation of something called the mobile driving respite. Now of course I'm a teacher, so this is how I roll, you know, with a blackboard. Anyway, um, to tell this story, I think we're gonna have to go back about 30 years. And that's when I was an undergraduate student at Montclair State University in New Jersey. And this was February and a dark and cold, bitter night. And I was in a, a 6 to 9 p.m. class. And in those days, I was probably too cool to dress warmly, a hat, a good coat, things like that. So instead, I probably just had a blazer on, maybe a scarf, uh, despite the cold weather. And class was over, and I had to walk to, uh, across campus uh, to get to my car. Um, and while I was walking, I just increasingly got colder and colder. And something weird happened that never happened before in my life. I started to shiver, uh, you know, like I've seen in movies, uh, you know, sh shivering and shivering. Uh, what was really strange about it is I couldn't stop shivering. Uh, and I later called this the shivering fits uh, that I uh, ended up um, sort of having for, for for a number of years uh, after this first time. And the shivering was so bad that my teeth actually were chattering, my body was shaking. And, and so I had a hard time getting to my car, so instead what I would do is I would pop into different buildings and warm up in the lobby and then walk a while and go into the next building and things like that. And, um, you know, I had the privilege, uh, the local one might say, to be able to go into these lobbies and, and, um, and be able to get warm. And eventually I got to my car and, and again got warmer in my car, but I still shook for a while. Uh, and the strange thing about it was that it was really suffering. It was really painful uh, to, to shiver uh, that intensely. Well, if we fast forward now to uh, current day in my life, um, I walk across the Smithfield Street Bridge all the time, and um, now I dress warmly uh, and appropriately to the weather. And I love walking across the bridge, and I love the, I love what some people would call bad weather. I love pouring rain. Um, I'm pretty anti-umbrella, so I love just having a hat and coat and, and getting soaking wet. I love the bitter cold. Uh, I love the snow and sweet gets into my beard and the wind on the bridge and all these things are sort of romantic to me. Uh, maybe I'm kidding myself and I, I feel like I'm tough in some way. I'm definitely not tough. But I would get to my car and, and then of course be able to get dry and get warm and safe and comfortable. And drive home and be able to get warm and safe and comfortable. And so this, this sort of surviving body mind and soul, uh, would be able to then enjoy some thriving. Meaning that once I got back to my home, I could get myself a glass of wine and sit in front of the fire and listen to some music, or perhaps watch a movie uh, um, or listen you know, to uh, a podcast or something along those lines. So this is what my story is sort of about, the surviving body, the suffering body. Uh, and the thriving body, um, the body that, and mind and soul, right? The body uh, that can enjoy these things that sometimes we take for granted. In a way, this is a personal story of embodiment, right? Uh, meaning um, knowledge gained through the lived body, knowledge gained through a suffering and pleasurable body. Sometimes when I'm walking across the bridge, uh, I'll see someone, see some folks there that uh, maybe are sitting on the bridge. And there was one particular person um, over the years that I would talk to and give money to sometimes and, and sometimes give my Oreo cookies from my, my class uh, uh, when, when they had a quiz uh, or, or buy, buy them a sandwich or something like that. And the one person I'm thinking of now is somebody who's about my age and and again, out there in the bitter, harsh weather, bitter cold, 
uh, sitting on the metal uh, of the bridge. And um, that kind of situation must really ache the, the body, especially when you, I think when you get older. And um, maybe, maybe this person I'm thinking of, and certainly other people I'm thinking of, can't get warm, can't get comfortable, uh, can't get dry enough um, and warm enough. And therefore, their body is in a uh, almost constant state of, of surviving, a suffering body. Um, and I think it's that sort of knowledge born of the body uh, that um, led to uh, uh, this thing we call the global private respite. And what happened was that we, uh, I got together with students and, and the students were already working on the issue of homelessness as a phenomenon and they were interviewing people and doing some observations and things like that. And we sat around one day and we, we talked about how at the shelters and in general, um, there's a lot of help for people, um, or a good deal of help maybe for people uh, in terms of surviving. There's food and hygiene products and blankets and coats and medical attention and, and things like that. But there didn't seem to be as much or much at all uh, regarding uh, thriving. Uh, and so we decided to maybe do a little bit of that. So we went to the shelter and we played a film called Coco uh, to the women's shelter. And a few women sat down and watched the movie uh, with staff and, and seemed to enjoy the movie. And, um, and the men over at the men's shelter sort of snuck around and were peeking in and asking about it. And I asked one of the, the guys there if they'd like to have a movie and they they said, yeah, please come and play a movie. So we did. And again, it was a cold night. We went there and we played uh, Coming to America uh, at the men's shelter. And they had their mats on the floor and they, a lot of them knew the movie and, and would um, uh, yell out uh, uh, you know, lines from the film. And some would probably fall asleep during while watching the film and so on. And this is thriving. Uh, and uh, it's good. I think it's good. And so we decided to expand it, and we created the Mobile Thriving Respite. Um, and uh, we uh, were fortunate enough to um, be able to do the respite at the uh, First Presbyterian Church, uh, and pastors Tom and Dan welcoming us there, uh, and fortunate enough then to go to the First Lutheran Church, and Pastor Jennifer again wonderful and welcoming us to, to do the rest, but, um, and we would, uh, you know, do body movement therapy, poetry, uh, uh, karaoke, card playing, movie nights, and things like that, and, and people would be able to, um, if they wanted to, come in uh, from the rough weather at times, or just from being out on the street all day uh, and be able to come in and, and relax a bit and have a snack and play cards. You know. And um, that's the mobile Friday respite. And the interesting thing to me uh, is that the idea of the respite didn't come from theories or philosophies or a, or a moral imperative in some way uh, necessarily. It came from the lived suffering body um, and the knowledge gained from that while it is not in any way complete, while it doesn't tell me or tell us uh, fully in any way what it's like, um, it gives enough of a hint, enough of an opening um, for us to wake up uh, some of us and to act. Yeah, that's my personal story about the mobile driving respite. Thanks, everybody, for listening.